Hello, everyone, and welcome to Who Ate It First, a food history podcast with a twist. I'm Kendall Rehnquist. And I'm Logan Rehnquist. And if you didn't catch that my voice cracked a little bit there, that's because we've been sick. Yay, sickness. And are still recovering. (laughs) So my voice might sound, at least in my head, it sounds gravelly. I don't know if it actually sounds that way. But hey, we got to do it for the content, right? Yeah. Well, it's like I have Sean Connery sitting in front of me, just minus the accent. (laughs) Austin just went through an ice storm, and we also got sick during that ice storm. Yay. So that's been fun dealing with that. The house is okay, though. Where where, Where we live is okay. So hope everybody's doing okay. Yeah. I hope everyone's doing all right. I think the weather is pretty good across the U.S. right now, at least I think. I hope so. I haven't really paid attention to any other states besides Texas. I'm Sean Connery. 007. I hit my hand. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Sean. (laughs) So what do you have today for us? Well, first, we're going to play a quick game. And everybody at home can play too. I won't hear you because this is a one-way mode of communication <laughs> but you can you can play along if you want are you ready i'm ready when i say hostess say whatever comes to your mind okay i'm gonna do it a few times okay ready ready hostess little debbies <laughs> hostess donuts <laughs> hostess uh cosmic brownies okay do they make those somebody does <laughs> he doesn't even know <laughs> okay i think so it's always in the same section with all those other things that are by Hostess. Okay. In the grocery store. One more time to get an even number. Hostess. Twinkies. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to get you to say anything specific. I was just interested with whatever came to mind. So, of course, Hostess does, as you said, powdered donuts, ding dongs. Oh, I forgot about ding dong. Ding dongs are so good. <laughs> I didn't know that. Those are little Swiss rolls. I didn't even mm-hmm. know what a Swiss roll was. That's a very like British thing. <laughs> but yeah. Zebra cakes? Zebra cakes, yeah. yep. Have you ever had a snowball? Um, I don't think so, but I've heard of them. They can be a little controversial. They're the pink, I think they're coconut, pink, right? coconut yeah. flavored. Anyway, so yes, you guessed it. I wanted to research Twinkies today. <laughs> Literally, for really no reason aside from I was reading an article about random food facts, as one does in their free time. That's what we do now, at least. (laughs) And I came across one food fact that gave me pause. It said, the filling of a Twinkie is not cream at all. It's vegetable shortening. (gasps) And I was like, that can't be. I am flabbergasted. It's cream, isn't it? And well, it's sort of true. Nowadays, it is shortening. Yes, for shelf life preservative reasons. Mm -hmm. But it didn't always used to be that way. So that fact was on (laughs) weareteachers.com. Those teachers tell them the truth about Twinkies. I love the matter of fact title for their website. (laughs) We are teachers. So anyway, my sources today are multiple videos on YouTube, an article on culturetrip.com, and an article on mashed.com. Twinkies were first produced in 1930 in Schiller Park, Illinois by the Continental Baking Company as a way to use strawberry shortbread pans that were no longer in use when strawberries were out of season. So they were looking for a way to reuse that product to save some money. And so James DeWar stuffed banana cream filled cakes into shortcake tins, baked them and sold them in packs of two for five cents each. Not only that, it was real bananas and real cream. Mm -hmm. And they were supposedly really, really good, really popular. But during World War II, banana imports all but ceased because bananas were being sent to the boys. So the company switched the banana cream for vanilla cream, and the Twinkie as we know it today was born. The vanilla cream has been the dominant flavor of Twinkies ever since, with a few limited productions of chocolate, the original banana, and other fruit flavors. And I wanted to say, speaking of original banana, we went to Walmart 
for dirt for our backyard, <laughs> but they didn't have any dirt. So we ended up with a Stranger Things t-shirt and a box of banana Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that trip really took a turn. I think it was really productive. <laughs> and we're going to talk about them right now. Did you like them? Yeah, for the most part. Did you not like the banana flavor? The banana I didn't find. I guess the thing that I thought was weirdest was the cream part. It just didn't taste like much of anything. I mean, it definitely tasted like fake, like not actual buttercream. The banana part, funnily enough, didn't bother me that much. I know it was artificial, but I think I didn't care for the cream part more, actually. Well, I loved them. I thought they were great. I love Twinkies. I thought they were delicious. The banana flavor was kind of a lot at first, but once you got used to it, you were like, yeah, yeah, these are good. I'm a snobby baker, so that's probably why I didn't like them as much. Whatever. They were delicious. (laughs) So the name Twinkie is said to have been inspired by a billboard for Twinkle Toe Shoes near the bakery. It's unknown whether the shoes resembled the shape of the Twinkie or if the baker just found the name like cute and catchy, but uh, that same gentleman, James DeWar, had the idea to name it a Twinkie. And I was looking for some pictures of this advertisement. I thought maybe I could find it. I know it was in the 30s, but I don't know if this is the exact ad, but I found one and it's of a real pair of shoes and they are very, very yellow. Mm. So I don't know if that is the shoe or not or somebody just found one and put it next to each other but i'm gonna show it to you now but these are would you say this is the color of a twinkie yeah i mean kind of looks like that color yeah so i'll post this picture i don't know if these are if this is the original advertisement and if these on the left are the shoe in question but i found it interesting that they are very yellow just like the Twinkie itself. Twinkies, created in mass these days, are made upside down in round top cake tins. The cakes are baked fully, and then since the flat bottom is facing upwards, the filling is injected with three nozzles via a gigantic arm thing. And that's why there's three small puncture holes on the bottom of all the Twinkies. It mm. looks really, really clean. That's how they're injecting the filling and it like, like in their squirts factory. in there. In their gigantic factory. Today, more than 1,000 Twinkies can be made per minute. Ooh. And Chicago is the top consuming city of Twinkies. <laughs> anyway, there's a very exciting episode of Unwrapped on YouTube. Do you remember the show Unwrapped yeah. from the early 2000s? It's a good one. With Mark Summers. And this was one of the original airing episodes. So that's kind of all there is on the history of Twinkies, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Twinkie pop culture. So in 1979, while on trial for murder, Dan White claimed that his mental capacity had been diminished by overindulging in junk food like Twinkies. (laughs) The explanation for his action was so outlandish because he had just killed a man that it earned the nickname the Twinkie Defense. While this is not a true legal term, it's often humorously referred to in the legal community. He literally killed somebody, and he was like, it's because I've been eating junk food. (laughs) It's all those Twinkies. The Twinkies made me do it. Which is insane. And then in 1995, the T-W-I-N-K-I-E-S Project, which stands for... Tests with inorganic noxious cakes in extreme situations was launched by scientists Christopher Scott Gouge and Tom William Stadler. How much do you love that project name? Noxious cakes. Uh, yes, it cakes with a K, just to be clear. Oh, okay. Because it spells, it spells Twinkies. Right. <laughs> cakes is spelled with a K. And what was that project about? The experiments in this project were designed to discover the scientific properties of this common snack cake, including solubility, density, radioreactivity, and oxidation, among others. 
These experiments and their results continue to be enjoyed by Twinkie enthusiasts and young scientists today. Is that because of the whole myth of Twinkie lasting forever? <laughs> Maybe. Like being able to last a post-apocalyptic. I'm gonna I'm gonna situation. talk about their shelf life oh, okay. question. Yes, I'm gonna talk about it. I don't think that had well, I don't know. That was in nineteen ninety five. They reevaluated the shelf life of Twinkies. I believe I read in twenty thirteen the company that currently owned them reevaluated and changed the shelf life. Anyway. In nineteen ninety nine I don't know if you remember this, you'd be little, but President Bill Clinton included Twinkies in the Millennium Time Capsule as an icon of American food culture. It's no coincidence that urban legends and rumors have perpetuated for years that a Twinkie has a shelf life of decades or millennia. That's actually not true. It's only 45 days. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> I always thought you could rely on good old Twinkies, if, you know. The world ended. I didn't want to click on it, and I didn't. I just saw the headline. It was, scientists do experiments on this 30-year-old Twinkie. And I saw like a quick picture, and I was like, I don't want to click on that. So if you want to read about a 30-year-old Twinkie, it's on the internet. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin my appetite. And today, Twinkies are being used in more and more creative ways. Deep-fried Twinkies are a common food at state fairs. Several devoted fans have built multi-tiered wedding cakes out of Twinkies, Oops. which I kind of get because it would be like ladyfingers. You know, they're kind of round yeah. like that. So that, I mean, that kind of checks out. And they've also found their way into other foods like pie, sushi, and tiramisu. Sushi. It, yes. Yes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the only thing I could think of would be if you were doing like a dessert sushi and when you cut a cross section of a Twinkie, it slightly looks like a sushi roll. Slightly. That is the only thing I could think of. That one, that fact kind of drove me crazy. But I have had fried Twinkies at the state fair. Mm -hmm. Can confirm game changing, delicious, phenomenal. I think it takes away that kind of artificial flavor because it has an extra textural thing. Because with a Twinkie out of the package, it's soft on soft, mm -hmm. but fried gives you a, a crunch, crunch that is just, and then it's warm. Everything's warm instead of like room temperature. Game changer. So then lastly, I tried thinking of a few of my favorite pop culture refs. One that I can think of is Ghostbusters, mm. of course, where Egon is explaining the amount of energy coming from an impending energy surge, it would equal a 35-foot-long Twinkie. And Winston goes, that's a big Twinkie. And then Egon, like, takes a bite of it. <laughs> and that's true. That would be a really big Twinkie. Of course, Wally, our favorite... Wally. <laughs> our favorite Pixar robot, he has a bug friend, and he sleeps in a Twinkie. Oh, yeah. And I'm just sad to say he might be a little bit incorrect because I don't think a Twinkie would survive yeah. a post-apocalyptic It's probably a reference event. to that. Yeah. yeah. So sadly, Pixar is, you know, kind of factually incorrect there, um, but still a great movie nonetheless. Can you think of any pop culture icons with Twinkies? Um, there's Twinkie the Kid. That's correct. Yes. I am sorry. I neglected to mention Twinkie the Kid. So Twinkie the Kid is the official mascot, or was, I guess we just read a Huffington Post article said that they killed off Twinkie the Kid at age 85. He made his debut in 1971. He appeared on product packaging. He is an anthropomorphized Twinkie. Appearing as a wrangler, he wears boots, gloves, a kerchief with hearts, and a 10-gallon hat. Created by Denny Lesser, a route delivery driver for Hostess in the San Fernando Valley, California. He designed the mascot, and his wife made the costume he used for traveling promotional campaigns, which is the cutest thing ever. Twinkie the Kid is adorable, by the way. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like Twinkies aren't nearly as, like, a national icon like maybe they were back in the 90s. I think they used to be, like, 60s, I think, was prime Twinkie time. Yeah. Somebody write in. Tell me if the 60s were prime Twinkie time. But I they... 
were a staple in American lunchboxes forever Mm -hmm. because there were two of them and they were only five cents. They were five cents for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So very affordable. And it gave children a little treat in their lunchbox that they could either share or not make friends or don't. No judgment. The box that we got was individually wrapped. There was a box of, I think, 10 Mm -hmm. individually. But I think still at gas stations, you can still get the Mm two-pack. But they are not five cents anymore. But anyway. So that's the history of the Twinkie. Awesome. And I think they're just adorable. And I love them. So the recipe we're using is from Bon Appetit on YouTube. Pastry chef Claire tested three different ways to recreate a Twinkie in a kitchen. And I felt like their last attempt was probably the closest to getting a pretty good result for someone like you who's looking for like a just a better version. Mm -hmm. Because yes, I realize that sponge Sure, it's got some hydrogenated oils. It's got some, you know, if you check the label, yes, there's vegetable shortening and oils and saturated fats in your, you know, snack cake. So I wouldn't call this a Twinkie dupe recipe. It's not going to taste just like it. Mm -hmm. But what it is going to taste like is a very delicious yellow sponge filled with buttercream. So we think she made 12 in her cake tins. So we cut this in half to theoretically make six. Yeah. Well, we counted how many she had in her tin and it was 12. I believe it was 12. Yeah. It was a big tin. Anyway. Yeah. That's why we're doing the recipe in half. So just know if you want to make double the amount of Twinkies, just double the amount that I am saying right now. So that is one and two thirds cups cake flour, one cup of sugar half a tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon kosher salt, a fourth of a teaspoon baking soda, one stick of unsalted butter, very room temperature, half a cup of buttermilk, room temperature, one tablespoon vegetable oil, two and a half large egg yolks, one and a half large egg whites, half a tablespoon vanilla extract. And for the frosting, you'll need one large egg white, fourth of a cup of sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon cream of tartar, one stick unsalted butter, very room temperature, and half a tablespoon vanilla extract. So for the cake, whisk together all of the dry ingredients into a standing mixer. Add your butter, your buttermilk, and oil. Beat on medium speed until smooth. Add egg yolks and vanilla. Beat again until smooth and light. And then I think she put this into a separate bowl because she then had to whip the egg whites into stiff peaks in that same bowl. So put that in a side bowl. Whip your egg whites to stiff peaks and fold into your batter. Be really careful that you don't knock out all the air. Spray your molds with nonstick cooking spray. Fill the molds two-thirds of the way up or even a little bit less. Bake at either... She didn't give an oven temperature, by the way. We guessed 325. You might want to put it at 350 and bake it in the oven until the edges are golden brown. Should take about 20 minutes. And for the frosting, combine the egg whites and the sugar in the bowl of an electric mixer. Beat over a double boiler until the mixture is thick and white or registers 160 on a thermometer. That takes a couple of minutes. Whip your egg whites in an electric mixer until the sides of the bowl are room temperature. So they had been hot sitting on the double boiler. So when that temperature cools down and it and it's not hot on the sides anymore. Add your butter a tablespoon at a time. Beat on high until the mixture is super light and thick. A couple of minutes. Add your vanilla. Transfer to a piping bag with an injector tip. Flip your Twinkie over so that the bottom is facing up. And insert the tip of the injector half an inch into the cake. Squeeze evenly until you see the sides of the Twinkie expand. And then you may eat them. So now we're going to... Go make those bad boys. Go make those bad boys. And once we do that, we will jump into rave or roast. Rave or roast. All right. All right. 
Well, that was quite the adventure. That was an adventure. (laughs) So just up at the top, I would say for best results, use some kind of tin. Yeah. That is in existence already. So I have a thing about not purchasing one use kitchen items. Mm -hmm. Things that I know I'll use like one time and probably never, ever use. I feel like it creates a lot of clutter when you have a lot of those random gimmicky kitchen items that you could really do the same thing with like a more multi-purpose kitchen tool. Yeah. Um, so long story short, we don't have that tin. So we made, but now I'm recommending that if you really want to make them do buy that because we made it with aluminum foil. I saw a guy on YouTube make his out of tin foil and his looked fine. But I th- I think he might have molded it around something he had in his house first. Mm. So I don't know what he molded it around because they were pretty, they were shaped well when they came out. So oh, okay. I'm problem. not exactly sure how he did it. Yeah, mine turned out bad. They was okay. They, it just, they didn't look quite as good as they could have if they were in an actual tin. I also filled them up too high, so they got, some of them had a little bit of a foot at the bottom, mm-hmm. like on a macaroon. It had like a, a muffin top, basically, yeah. on the bottom. And also, they were kind of big. They were a bit bigger than a standard Twinkie. I'm not a baker, so the buttercream was kind of difficult for me. It's a really challenging buttercream for somebody that doesn't bake. That's not like basic recipe like your your basic icing is like butter powdered sugar and like a little bit of milk and you mix that all together and you get like a frosting i think that still would have been okay yeah it would have been fine in this and how did you like it kendall how do you rave it or roast it (laughs) i really want to know um i'd say i rave it but just kind of like it was basically a chiffon cake is what you made Correct. And I thought that that turned out well. I thought you did a good job of making the cake. Thank you. And the structure seemed good. It was well baked. Even Thank though it like, took twice as long as you realized it was going to take. Okay. Yes. Side note. I think we had our oven too low. 325 I think was too low. So 350 is probably going to be your better bet. Also don't fill it up as high as I did. That also did not help. Mm-hmm. So it took me about 40 to 45 minutes in the oven Instead of her 20 that yeah. she said. But you did, yeah, like I said, you did a good job. It wasn't overbaked and it wasn't underbaked. It was a well-baked cake. Thank you. Um, So that was good. And then your buttercream the second time around was very good. Yeah, so I it, had to make that twice because I, I messed up on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just full stop. I messed yeah. up on it. But I mean, the buttercream was good. It was a stable buttercream. It didn't split or anything like that. You did the thing where you hold it above your head and see if it slides out and, yeah. it, and it stayed and it up stayed there. Right there. So your execution, honestly, from being such an amateur baker, you executed on both those items really well. And then we did put the cream in when the cake was still too warm. That was my bad. I should have stuck them in the fridge for a minute. Yeah. So the buttercream kind of melted back into butter and got absorbed into the cake rather than being just the cream inside of it. I was kind of hungry and I just, I wanted to get them wanted filled. It over. Yeah, I wanted to get it filled because I had beaten the buttercream twice and my arms were tired and I and I just wanted to fill them. So that was my bad. Yeah. So, you know, there were a couple of technical issues that we know that we messed up on. Paul Hollywood would have been so mad at me. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> Oh, I didn't wait I for them to cool down all the way, Paul. Oh, geez. Every time we bake something, that's how I think. It's like, is Paul going to like this or is he going to yell at me for messing up some technical aspects about this? I didn't have a soggy bottom because you can't yeah, really have a soggy bottom yeah. on cake. <laughs> I mean, you can have an underbaked cake and it wasn't, so that's good. Overworked, underproved, <laughs> underbaked. So I'm saying all of that basically that I thought your execution was excellent. And that wasn't the issue as to why I'm saying I would maybe give it just like a 6 out of 10. Mm. Uh, More so because I just didn't care for it that much. Mm. Like, I thought it tasted fine. And I liked it more than a normal Twinkie. (laughs) But 
I think it was just kind of boring because it was just like a regular, you know, vanilla cake with like a basic vanilla frosting. And I don't know. I'm just bougie, I guess, and wanted something a little bit more dynamic in terms of like flavor. I see what you're saying. It was also another textural thing. I mean, it's chiffon cake with a buttercream. It's like kind of samey. Yeah. I think if I were to do it again, this is a nice cake recipe. That could be nice in the spring and summer for like garden parties or to go with tea, but it's not a Twinkie. Mm-hmm. It's it's not. There's no substitute. There's no competition, to be honest. Hostess does it better. I will always pick a Hostess Twinkie, even if you said this is the most gourmet version. Paul Hollywood made it himself. I'd be like, as much as I love you, Paul, I am going to eat a Twinkie because a Twinkie is a Twinkie. Challenge accepted. But you see what I'm saying? A Twinkie is a Twinkie. You can't mess with perfection. I know what that flavor is and it's associated with like childhood and happiness and just delicious things. Yeah. You're competing with nostalgia. Exactly. You can't recreate that. In my opinion, I tried and I did not succeed. But what I did make was something that also I think maybe if you browned it a little bit more in the oven, if you put some nuts on top, if you put like maybe a chocolate drizzle on it, some powdered sugar, if you put some other textural elements and maybe some fruit with it. Yeah, I was going to say like strawberries or some sort of glaze or just, yeah, making the buttercream something more interesting. Vanilla. Or, yeah, the vanilla. Because, <laughs> yeah, you're right. And there was vanilla in both the cake and the icing. Yeah. So maybe making one a different flavor. Yeah. A chocolate sponge vanilla interior or a chocolate sponge strawberry interior. Yeah. And that'd be super cute for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Also, I think you could make this in a in a different tin. I think you could do this in a spring form tin. The same recipe. We Honestly, we probably should have tried it in like a loaf pan. We probably just should have tried it in there, made one big honking <laughs> Twinkie. Try to make the 35 foot Twinkie, Twinkie that Egon was talking about. All of that to say, I think I also, I think I'm going to give it a little bit better. I think six and a half out of 10. I think the recipe is there. I think Claire did a good job. And I, I would like to make this perhaps for friends in the springtime. And yeah, maybe put a little blueberry compote on top. Mm-hmm. And I think that tartness could um, really kick it up. So props to Claire for, I think she said she filmed it over four days. If I had to do this for four days, I would probably be at my wit's end. (laughs) So props to her for doing all that so we didn't have to. I did have to. In her defense, she's starting from scratch. We just took her recipe and made it. Yes. I mean, I did have to restart my buttercream twice, but that's okay. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. This was really informative. You're welcome. Okay, well, I think that just about wraps it up for Twinkies then, right? I think so. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Who Ate It First. If you liked our podcast, please help us out by following our Instagram account to see some behind-the-scenes pictures or by leaving us a review on your preferred podcast platform. I did notice we are up to two whole reviews on our podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts. Thank you. I just want to put out a personal challenge to the community of 10 or so people that listen to this podcast. I think we have 17, actually. 17? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and we love all 17 of you. Yeah. I don't know what yet, but if we get up to 10 reviews, I don't care if the reviews are good or bad. If we get up to 10, I might do something. I don't know what yet. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Not something crazy because it's only 10 reviews, so like, give me a break. But I don't know. We'll, we'll think of something. You're going to bite a lemon like it's an apple. Okay. Yes. I'll steal that from Watcher. I'll bite a lemon like it's an apple. We'll put it up on our Instagram page. Uh, but I'm only going to do that if we get up to 10 reviews on our on Apple Podcasts. Yep. I'll just say that one specifically. On Apple Podcasts, 10 reviews. They don't have to be written. They could be bad reviews if you want. Or you can leave good reviews, hopefully. But... I'm trying to tell you, like, don't leave five star reviews unless you really mean it. Yeah. If you hate us, uh, that's fine. Yeah. If you give us honest reviews, as long as we hit 10 reviews yeah. on Apple Podcasts, then I will bite into a lemon like it's an apple and I will post it on our 
social media. Oh my gosh. Of at who ate it first on Instagram. Thank you. Also, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> if you have a food you'd like us to do an episode on, pictures of your attempts to recreate the same dishes that we've covered, or any fun food stories that you'd like to share with us, then email us at whoateitfirst at gmail.com. We might share it in one of our future episodes or on our Instagram. Once again, I am Kendall Runquist. And I'm Logan Runquist. It has been delicious. And Twinkylicious. For delicious, definitious Twinkylicious. Bye, everybody. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>